Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mark Stevenson. I'm the marketing guy for Cold SE. Welcome to tonight's webinar on how to tell if it's time for a forehead, how to, how to judge the financial impact of upgrading your machine from a single head to a 1504 or 1506. 1504 is behind me. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to introduce Don Copeland, but what I'm going to do right now is kind of, that's Don, what I'm going to do right now is uh, run you through our standard um, list of kind of benefits that we have for doing business with Cold SE and for being part of the Cold SE family. So hang on for just a second. I'm going to switch over. Now, occasionally when we switch back and forth between video and the computer screen, there'll be a little glitch. Just click away and click back, and it usually clears things up. If it does not clear things up, there's nothing we can do. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you is the caspodcast.com. This is a great place to kind of listen to your basic business information. There are a lot of tips here. Normally, it's it's myself and Mark Fila, the uh, business development guy for Coleman and Company. He's waving in the background. Um, I'm still looking at the camera, by the way, even though you can't see me looking. Um, and the CAS podcast is basically a, uh, a conversation about business. You'll see this most recent one. This most recent one is called Working Life. Wait. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Don Copeland is, it's after hours here. It's after hours here, and things are a little bit looser than they would be if we were doing this during the day. So I apologize in advance. All right. So the CAS podcast is basically um, a, a radio show on the Internet where you can log in and you can play recordings between 30 and 60 minutes of us discussing um, business topics and making recommendations to new businesses. So the last one that we did was working on your business instead of in your business. I think that's a great one kind of based on the E-Myth book. We also talked about wasting money on marketing. Uh, we did a, a one on tripping over pennies when costs don't really matter. Um, spaghetti sauce and apparel decorating, you're really going to have to listen to that one to figure out what it means. But if you go to caspodcast.com, just hit play or uh, download us from iTunes. Put us on your Android device if you do that. The other one is CAS webinars, and you've probably got to this website already which is how you registered for this particular webinar. But basically what you'll find is a schedule of events. These are all live online events that we do um, so far absolutely free of charge. And if you if you just missed it, Mark Vila did one on created embro creating embroidered patches, which is always great. We've got this one. And if you click up here, you can see the ones that are just Cold SE equipment, just Coleman and Company equipment. And we also have a partner called Deco Network that specializes in websites specifically for apparel decorators. So you should definitely look at the next time we're doing one of those and check it out. Now the last and kind of the, the hub of all this is the Facebook group for custom apparel startups. This is where you come to exchange information, to get motivated, to ask questions about multi-heads and embroidery techniques and, and software that you might want to use for pricing. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. We also post all of the alerts about our upcoming uh, webinars and uh, podcasts. Somebody's got a, a problem with the DTG printer that they're looking for help with. There's a video of our Pro Spangle machine. There's just a lot on the CAS podcast. And the last thing I'm going to show you is our YouTube channel. We've got about 700 videos on this thing on everything from uh, vinyl cutters to patch kits to DTG printers to all of the recordings of our the webinars that we've done in the past. And I think that is it for my introduction. Does anybody have questions so far? Vince, no problem. You were talking to a customer about embroidery. I mean, I, I hope you close the deal. That's all I have to say. Now, uh, we've got several customers on here. It's great. We're glad to have you. Because one of the unique things about the Avance line is that 100% trade up uh, towards one of these things right behind me. So uh, I'm going to turn on the camera right now and I'm going to subject you, I mean, I'm going to introduce you to Don Copeland. Um, there he is, Don Copeland. Thank hey everybody, you. thanks for spending some time with us tonight. I um, 
Yeah, I'm going to move uh, this out of the way. I think you guys maybe... Just actually, hit the little red line there. There we go. We'll move it out of the way a little bit. Okay. Thanks for taking some time out tonight to be with us look at the, uh, the multi-head. I'm still recovering a little bit because Mark and I have done, I don't know how many of these together. Thousand. I've never officially completely broken them down like I did. No, that's true. Right. And that's I would have stayed true. to enjoy it, but I actually had a mouthful of water and I had to leave <laughs> the room. Um, so this, this webinar is really geared towards probably newer um, embroiderers, not necessarily newer uh, apparel decorators, but newer embroiderers and kind of getting their head wrapped around. What's this multi-head thing about? I mean, I'm going to... Mark asked me to kind of boil this down to even the most the basics. basics. The, the basics. real basics. And here's the real basics. A third of you, when I talked to you the first time on the phone, you talked to me about a multi-head machine, right? And guess what? You're really thinking multi-needle, right? Oh, right. That's and so true. let's just kind of clarify that up front. When you look at embroidery machines, commercial embroidery machines, you're basically going to have a number description for the model. I had somebody say, you know, you guys copy somebody else's model. <laughs> well... We all do, all right? You're, the, mo the most common thing you start off with is our Avance 1501C. Very simple. 15 needle, first number. Second number, 01, single head. And then a C, a designation for a compact, all right? So standing behind me here is a 1504 Avance. 15 needles, four different heads. That means I'm sewing four items at one time. Now, even though we have different shirts loaded up here, the reality check is, is what we are we are doing is we are sewing the same design just on different colored shirts. And we'll show you here as we get sewing, we actually get a little twist on this one down at the end because of a color change on the thread. Um, but then we also have a 1506C that Mark indicated about, 15 needle, six head, compact machine. When we say compact, when we talk about big machine, compact has to do with the sewing interval on the machine. Uh, just like your single head, and let me let me ask a question here while I, I'm thinking about it. How many of you all have already got embroidery machines? Put your hands up if you would. Where can I check for hands, Mark? Attendees. Attendees. All right. Put your hand up if you already have an embroidery machine. Okay. Eric, Shelley, Rebecca. Looks like I... Four, four. Okay, there we go. It looks like we've got... You know, half. A half to a third of you all already have machines. Thank you all. Um, so, th for those of you who already have the machines, let's take a little, take a pause for a second, and we're going to talk to to the people who don't have machines yet. Embroidery. You know, you, you may be in apparel decoration already, and you're getting demands. You're farming stuff out. You have to kind of assess where you're going with embroidery. For those of you already who are doing embroidery. You understand that embroidery, more than any other apparel decoration method, is about time. What I say that is the number of stitches is determines how long it takes you to sew. You have so many hours in a day, so many hours a day you're willing to work. And so what do you do? You, you say, okay, I am doing an average design of 10,000 stitches. It takes me an average of 15 minutes to, to, to cycle the machine on that. Therefore, I can do, what, four an hour? Four an hour. If I have a single head, I can do 32 in a, in a normal day. If I work an eight-hour day, yep. if I work a 10-hour day, I can do 40, right? So what does a multi-head bring to the table? That scenario I just gave you, which was 40 in 10-hour day, it's going to take me two and a half hours right. on a four-head machine. literally four times. Literally. Or it's going to take me under two hours, about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes on a six head. So it reduces that time factor down quite a bit there. All right. Um, what it ha what's the difference between a multi-head and a single head machine? Number of heads. It really is. The size of the machine obviously is larger, but smaller. In fact, Mark, can you swing over to the single head? Yep, sure yeah. can. I want to show you the single head over here. And if you look at a single head that you see over here, literally that single head is about a quarter of the size of this when you look at the footprint on the floor. So the productivity per square foot of a four head versus four single heads is going to be about the same. But the real difference between the two yes. is the cost per head. All right. So how many heads do I have and what does it cost me per head? Single head over here, ballpark is $11,000. All right. Four head over here, you're looking more near about twenty nine or slightly over $7,000. Per head. Right. Productivity, $11,000 to do one. 
seventy thousand seven thousand and change to do one uh, iteration. That is from a investment standpoint. Right. But more importantly, is what can you get done? If you have a hundred piece order like we just described, that was a that's a literally a three business day job. Over here, it's not even a full day. Right. So those are things you got to weigh in on and figure out what does your business model look like, and does your business model look like? I do a lot of repetition, right? Even though we got multiple colored shirts lined up over here, we see in a minute here when we start the machine up, we're showing the same that we're showing the design that we have on here. You know, we're very practical here at Coldessi, right? If we're going to run a forehead for a, this, we're going to head and do a shirt for the sale. We actually did this webinar because Don needs four more shirts. Yes, it, it's getting later in the year. It's starting to get cold down here in Florida. <laughs> these are our dress shirts. We just wear these yeah. normal. Usually we wear more like a performance type of wear, and it's starting to get cold here. So we went to the Real heavy PK shirts for the cold weather we get down here in Florida during the winter. You know, sometimes it gets in the in the low 70s down here. So you got to go to a heavier knit shirt like a, a PK, right, Sean? That's right. correct. All right. So we've already talked about um, the the fact that it's four. To, it's the difference between eleven thousand dollars versus seven thousand dollars per head. Most people can do the math on that and figure out that that now. it's four times more productive. More times more productive. So you're going to make four times more money and, per hour. And then, and I, we were talking about this before because we, we don't know how people's minds cycle and what you have done or experienced before. A benefit of a multi head, as you see, right now I have four shirts on the machine set up and, and sewing, presumably. And what do I have already done? Right here in front of them, I have the next set already done. You know, any of you who have. Talk to me on the phone. You know, I call this one to go, one to sew, right? Yep. You got one down here that's ready to go. This one is sewing right now. As soon as it's done, I want to pop this hoop off, pop this hoop, the shirt hoop on, start the machine. Then I'm going to deal with unhooping, rehooping the next shirts, and getting them laid here. If you were running three or four single heads, all right? There would be stuff where, everywhere. It would be everywhere. Yeah. And you wouldn't know where it's at. That's another advantage of a multi-head over single. Works Obviously, right. the downside is, is if I'm doing orders of of three and orders of ones, a multi doesn't work. Now, that being said, let's say you have a job that's in order of something that doesn't fit in 12, in 14, right. right? Say you get an order for 13 pieces. What are you going to do? Well, ultimately, you know you're going to have to run the machine four times. I like to tell people, balance it as best possible. Do three, 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 and four. Yeah. All right? And how do I do that so I'm not turning around switching this and on and that off? I'm going to run my threes first, right? And I would just come down here and I would probably just turn off head number four. That head is no longer going to sew, all right? The other three will sew. And then on the last iteration, when I load this up, I'll just switch that back on, switch that back on, and now all four heads are going to sew. All right? So that's something, again, people don't, they, they start thinking, well, my orders aren't always done, right. and they're not. You know, and you've got to start to cycle that into your thinking as well. Four head versus six head. Are you doing tons and tons of work that's traditional standard embroidery like this? Or are you doing more big jacket backs and stuff? Because that's a way in as well. Right here, the do you have a large hoop? The biggest hoop? Uh, there are no on the wall. The largest hoop on this machine, a four head, is 16 inches by 16 inches. The reason we call our six head a compact is it doesn't have a 16 inch sew area, it's about a 14 inch sew area, and the largest hoop that's standard with it is a 12 by 12. So, if you are using a single head right now, think about what your, your, your large orders are like. Are they a lot of big jacket backs? Or are they all just more traditional type of embroidery? I call it meatball embroidery, which would be you know, Logos. shirts, hats, yeah. things like that. Then a compact is fine. And the cool thing is, this machine is only 11 inches smaller than a six head compact. So, space is not an issue right. in your decision process between a four head and a six head. Neither is the electrical. Concerns. They're, they're all 220s, right? They all they only draw about five or six amps. Don, we've got a question. Will it do caps as well? Yeah, absolutely. Everything you can do with your single head, you can do with the multi head. In fact, we don't have it out here, I don't think, but you can get crazy with the multi head. You can actually do flat embroidery. You can actually, there's a, a piece that goes across here, it's called a sash frame or a border frame that actually will sew on all four heads. If you had to do a, a piece of tapestry or a a large piece of artwork and you wanted to do it on a large piece, you'd actually digitize the artwork and lay it out here and you would just stagger which head you turned off. That's so I would run the design one time with only head one on, right? And these wouldn't be so. Then I would turn off head one and, and all the way down. So you really large things as well. 
if you do tapestries or you do vestments or things like that, where you want to be able to do really large items. You never would do on a single head without rehooping. Right. That's another thing. It's not a, a, a real common application, but it certainly opens the door if something comes up. You know, some people even want to do it like on tablecloths and have a running yeah. pattern down a tablecloth. Uh, there's another question. Um, will it do heavy items? Well, when, do you, when do you say heavy, what do you mean by heavy? You mean heavy weight in terms of like uh, it, it weighs a lot yes, or heavy yes. or like a car or a jacket? Yeah, yes, it weighs a lot. Okay, I mean, absolutely it will. Just like our, our standard machine, if you need to, you know, you can actually bring these tables up just like you can on your standard machine. In fact, when you use the border frame, these tables are going to be flush and you're going to actually bear that weight. So if you're doing a really heavy type of blanket or something like that, You'll bring those up, and that'll bear the weight so that your hoops are not coming down like this. It's just going to come down, and it's just going to hit that. It also is going to eliminate a lot of the, the flop that you would get on a heavier item, which can cause some registration issues and break needles and threads. Yep. Cool. Are there any other questions specifically on the difference between a single head and a multi-head machine? Um, here's one. Does it use the same software? Absolutely. Commercial embroidery machines are commercial embroidery machines. One thing that is unique. Oh, I say it's unique. It's the same between the machines is the single head we showed you. One brain, one head. One brain, four heads. Right. All right. So we only have one set of electrons. That's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons that if you guys had to see right now as they're talking Indian language or something back <laughs> in front of me, right? Um, the you have you load a design up one and it's just it's all one shaft. It goes down along here, and it's just driving multiple heads at once. So the all of the electronics and that basically are the same between a single head and multi head. We do have a slightly larger control panel over here than you do on a standard single head, but that's the main difference between a single and a multi. So you can certainly your DST files that you load up to sew on your single, you're absolutely going to sew on your on your multi head without any thought. It's it's the same thing. It doesn't know it being the control panel doesn't know it's driving four heads. There's right. no difference over here than the designations. You're going to set your, your sew sequences. Now, obviously, things to think about. Make sure you have all the same colors on the machine in the same spot. That's another thing to think about if you're moving from a single head up to a multi-head. It's a real investment in thread the first time. <laughs> right. All right? But the good thing is, it's Coleman and Company. I think their discounts start at 6. So if you've got a single head, you're almost, a forehead, you're almost better off to buy 6 of a color instead of four, because your prices are going to break it out as well. So your price of your thread will go down on a multi-head over what it is on a single gauge. You're being, buying in larger volumes. You're going to get a better pricing as well. But this machine has 60 spools of thread on it right now. That's a real number. Right. Seven bucks a spool, that's yeah, 420 bucks. A little, little, little bit of money. Right. Cool. Is there any way to trace a design other than a square trace? Good question, Stephen. Obviously, you've done this before. Yes, there is. You actually... On the multi, the not on the multi, multi on single head square trace. Right. You're sorry, you're rectangular trace. You're right. So you could always put it on your single head and trace it. But no, on this, it's just a rectangular trace on the multi. My bad. You could. Yes. You could. I, I one, like one head has a black spool instead of a white spool. Man, Vince, you, dude, you really, really need to uh, like get a light. I don't believe you saw that. <laughs> That's what we were talking about when I was talking about the design earlier. I have this situation on this design. If you see the design I'm wearing right here, <laughs> on this, wow, wow. <laughs> All right, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Yeah. All right, on this design, this is what we wanted to sew like on my black shirt, my, my garnet shirt, and my blue shirt. However, on the gray shirt, we thought white might get washed a little bit, so we wanted to sew the wording, the coldessi, in black, which I don't think any of us have a shirt on and have the black now. So instead of just putting that on a different order, we just... Reverse the threads for the white and black just for this job, so we're sewing black in that position. That is a great catch, Vince. I really, it really love was. That. I'm impressed. What do we got here? You Steven. and a free multi head. No, you don't. Not really. Stephen doesn't have a single head. I got you. No, Stephen, it, it, that is a difference. And one of the things that some of the stuff that you'll find in the process of a multi head are going to be geared towards this probably being a machine that more is going to be guided. Uh, towards people who have done embroidery before, but that doesn't mean you can't do it if you don't have a single head to start off with. And in fact, the, one of the real big differences between a single head and a multi-head, when you buy this machine, you get a technician that's going to come to your building for two full days. You'll spend part of the first day setting the machine up, leveling the machine, and getting it all ready to sew, sewn, sewn out and whatnot. 
And then the rest of that time, he's going to teach you how to operate the machine, how to load your design, how to hoop things if you haven't hooped things before. And basically, he becomes your employee. Yeah. Uh, it's not unusual for our tech to tell us in the last half of the second day, they're running production with yeah. the customers, yeah. helping them get used to the cycling of the machine. So you're going to get a lot more personalized attention. And literally, it's twice as long as our traditional training classes. So those type of things will be addressed. And you know what size the design is and whatnot. So when would be a good time, Don, to to start with a 1504 rather than a 1501? What what kind that of circumstances? Yeah, that's um, my, my answer. <laughs> what would be a good time? You know, assessment of your business. For instance, a lot of folks that we deal with in this industry are migrating, adding to a screen printer. It's an, a perfect example, uh, or a sporting goods store. Yeah. Or maybe a trophy store. Somebody who's already getting people coming in and knocking on their door and say, hey, we love what you do for us and fill in the blank, whatever you do. And they're ordering 10 gross or 20 gross. And they say, you, you know, the guy, this guy, I don't like this guy who does this stuff for me, right? And so can't you just do it? You do my screen printing. Yeah. I get my trophies and awards here. And, you know, we get all our soccer uniforms for our kids here. Can't you do something? What kind of orders are you doing? A lot of these are 12, 24s. 72s, 144s, that's a good time to start with a multi. Yep. You know, if you have an existent business or you have an existent opportunity that's real and it's it's yeah. sustainable. We've, we've got a customer uh, just like that. He has been farming out his embroidery uh, one piece at a time, and then he got uh, an order from a university. So that's where the 1504 comes in. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It is. It's not something that I would I would encourage somebody who's trying to start a home based business. Well, you got to have a big home on a big. It's, budget, a, it's a big. Right? It's, a big, have, it's a big. It's a big. You got to not only get this there, you got to get it in your house, and they don't bend. <laughs> and so it's not anymore. Gonna come straight yeah, out. Not anymore. We have customers who run multi heads out of their homes. Typically, it's in areas that have more mild climates, like here in Florida. Uh, and number two, it's usually into a garage. Yeah. They, they've repurposed a garage or they have an outbuilding or something like that. That doesn't mean they're having people do it. 220 volts. 220 volts. So if you run, roll in, like another more reason to do your garage. You probably have 220. In fact, most people in Florida, our power, for our breakers are out, out in our garage. So it's an easy short run to do a 220. It's not a major 220. It certainly will run on a home current, which is a standard 220 as opposed to a three-phase 220, which you're not allowed to have in residence. I hear you, Stephen. Yeah, I understand that. That's a. It's really. It's not something I've run into. It be an issue with most people on the multi. Would you say, Sean? What's Sean's that? over here. I'm not just right. looking at the wall. What's I'm that? just doing the box trays as opposed to an no. online trays. It generally is not. Um, but it, it, it is definitely a trade-off you have between a single head and a multi head. You know. Other questions on what in a multi head will do different than a single head, or, I mean, anything in general. The weird. We're really flexible on this one. This is a, yep. a first-time webinar we've done. Okay, we are home-based. Our garage is 1,800 square feet. Wow, wow. With 100-amp 100, 100 service just for the for the garage. Man, that's awesome. Where, where are you what from, kind, What kind of classic cars are you keeping exactly. in that garage? That's, that's the question. Thinking. I would have my own pistol range in there, I think, <laughs> if that was that size. Um, that, that's the size of the, more than most people's houses, right? So, you know, but that is right. You have that and you have that 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 service. The good thing with the multi-head is they are more efficient than a single head. A four head is not going to use four times the right. juice right. that a single head is, though that's generally not a concern with most people. These things only draw five amps, right? Maybe six on a six head. It's not a lot of amperage that they draw. <laughs> He's got a 1971 SSL. Uh, I knew the it. answer. <laughs> there we go. Um, but... You, you start to get a picture of of what a multi-head embroidery machine up. You know, what we're going to do is we've been sitting here and I've been flapping my gums. Let's go ahead and let it run for a little bit and let you see the machine run. So one of the things you noticed was over here I was flipping a switch. Can you uh, zoom in? Here, Mark. Yes, I'm, I'm going to do a manual this, zoom. This so is a redneck zoom. If, if you get motion it. sick, close your eyes. All right. Whoa. All right. If you'll see here, this is the switch I would use to turn the head off, number one. Number two, it's a green light here, Okay. When we get a thread break, a bobbin out, or your traditional stops, you would get an embroidery that are not planned for stops. This, The light of the head that had the problem is going to turn red. That's where you turn it off? 
That's also where you turn where, it off. Oh, where do you turn it on? Is that same space? Bingo. Okay. That's a, welcome to Marketing 101. Yeah. Man. Uh, but that light there is an indicator, just like on your single head. Now, another benefit to this is if you're in another room and you can't hear the machine running, if you look over and the machine's not you moving and you can see light. that that light's green, guess what? It's done. If you see that one of the lights is a different color, a.k.a. red, yeah, that means you have a thread break or something like that. They're indicated exactly the same. Tensioning is the same as it is on a single head and whatnot. Okay, we're going to go back, and Don's going to hit the start button so it you can see so this thing simple. so out. And one bit. thing that's cool on a multi-head, you have start and stop buttons at both ends of it. So just in case, you know, you're over here and you want to start it, or you're down there, you want to, <laughs> or if you're you're here and you want to start it, you walk down to here and you notice that there's a problem on this one that, you, that Sean hooped it wrong or yes. something, right? You can jam this stop button. You're not trying to run back to the other stop button. So I can I'm ready. I want to do a, a left a left handed stop. Sorry. There we go. Which by the way, this logo was sewn on that multi head. All right, we're gonna come in and take a look. Can you show some of the things that the home button you can do? I think, does it also do the, the backup and the forward stitching and stuff like that? Okay. Ah. Right, stop. And you know, it sounds crazy, but I have a forehead embroidery machine standing behind me. And These it's running really right quiet. now. Yeah. And it's running at 750 stitches per minute. Yeah. And you can hear me, right? We can see you too. That's way too close. That's, that's way too close. And you also get the design preview on the uh, on the right. control panel. It's where it's showing, it shows you where you're at. That's helpful when you want to do some stuff. And I think the question we were having about the uh, the home, yeah, is when you get a thread break or you get a bob and out or something like that. And the, the home button, which means I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about the stop button, it allows you to go back in increments of one stitch. 10, 100, by colors, and, it, yeah. and it's, it's nice because when you have the color display over here, you can actually see where you're backing up to. Let's, uh, let's get a closer look. The home button takes it back to home. It, it takes you back to the start point. So once you set your start point, that goes back to the point. You're only going to you're not going to use it out when you're running. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm sitting here talking to the screen. That the home button actually takes it, Stephen, back to the home position where you set your home. You know, you know, you, know, you can. Oh, look. look. See, I did it on purpose. We had a thread break. No, we see. never have a thread break during demonstrations. <laughs> right. Let's put Sean on the spot. You see right here, you can see the light flashing. And that means that we had the whole minute machine has stopped. And if you see the head next to it, and actually we'll swing back through here, and you'll see the other two heads. Still the green. lights are green. They're all green. Okay? That's the way you would be indicated of where your thread break, your bobbing out, whatever the, the scenario is that, that caused the problem. And if simultaneously two of them went down at the same time, they would go off. It's very seldom. Do you see that happen? He's hitting the stop button right now. He's actually backing up by the stitch. He's going to show back over top of it. There we go. Cool. All right. So I think we we'll probably take some more questions. Yeah, we don't need to watch this uh, so out. You want to just hit the stop button? Okay. Questions? Any more questions on the machine that we had? As it goes, we're not going to sew out a whole job for you. You see, we actually had a thread break on the on the other one. Sean, did it on purpose? He did it on purpose, or is that a bobbin? Any no, um, bobbin any more questions? Bobbin. Yes, <laughs> Sean. Did you notice the way Sean definitively looked at me and says, "No, the bobbin's full," because <laughs> we did a one of these webinars once doing puff, right? Yeah, yes. and it's like 
they kept stopping. Folks, yeah. here's what happens is Sean is on the phone with, uh, with one of you folks somewhere across the nation um, until right before the webinar. So our, our machines aren't, aren't taken care of nearly as well as yours sure are. Right, exactly. <laughs> In fact, Sean's on OT right now. We thank him for being here. Yeah, we really but appreciate that. Really, in, in seriousness about why multi-head, when multi-head. Most of our customers, a large majority of our customers, are mom and pop. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're a small operation, but it means that you're not gigantic, right? And in a lot of cases, if it's going to get done, Vince says hi. Yes, I say, hey, how uh, you doing, Vince? Um, and and it, it, it's about time. All right, when you're working 40 hours a week, if you're content to work 40 hours a week and do what you're doing in that 40 hours, it's fine. When when you have situations where you have spikes, let's say you do some some event every year where you have to do a 300 shirt quarter, and all of a sudden you have to work 12 hours a day for three or four days during that week, that falls into the suck it up buttercup care category, <laughs> right? Um, there that is a business term. Okay. Right, and so, but when all of a sudden that starts to become a 10 hours a day, five days a week. You're missing the kids' soccer game. Uh, you know, you're not getting home in time for yeah. dinner. You're not having time with your family. That's when you start thinking, when do I need to go to a, another single? Or, or from when a marketing I... perspective, when you when you hear yourself turning down orders because you don't have the time. Well, if you're turning down reasonably sized orders that could make you money, if you could do them because you don't have time, then that's that's when you really look seriously at a, at right. a multi-head as well. In fact, Steve, Steve's asking again. He said he didn't hear. It's about the home button. The home button homes the machine to the, the origin start point that you set up, right? Sorry, we're, in the middle. we're in the middle of the job. We're not going to do it now. It, it does it the same on a single head, right? And yeah, it, it home button takes you home, which is where you set. Now, it's not a bad idea if you come into a machine that's already loaded. Hit the home button right, to make sure now? that you're starting where it was supposed to be set. And if you look at it, man, that doesn't look like it's on center, and you know it's supposed to be on center, and you hit the home button, it doesn't move, then you need to, to reset your origin on the machine. Don, there's a question. Can you do two different designs at the same time? No, you cannot. This is a single head, a multi head. One brain, all four heads do the same thing. You can do what we're doing down here, which you're not going to see. We're not going to run through the whole design, where you actually have white thread sewing the cold desi on these three, and black thread sewing the cold desi on that one. So that was just kind of our twist on showing some difference in the design, but it's still the same design. They're all being driven by one head. Okay. What about the end button on the control panel? Steven, are you looking for training? <laughs> you have one of these, Steven? <laughs> do, they, do they have a dual multi-head? Oh, so so yes, think? he does have one and he is looking yes, for training. Yes. Okay. We, these are not really for training. Certainly we'll have, if you want to send Mark, uh, or I'll get have yeah. Mark send you an email address, you can contact Sean, okay? You have one of our multis and have him train you. We have to be fair to the people who are yep. here to learn about it. Uh, All right, so um, there, I do, I do have one observation. Now we've got a lot of a lot of our customers that could trade in their Avante for multi head, mm -hmm. but they keep it. Mm -hmm. So, so why does that make sense? Why does having a single head and a four head make sense? Uh, real good question. Let's jump real quick to Vince's question. They do not make a dual. That's actually a patent that's held by uh, a company that's in uh, some financial trouble right now. So at some point that may free up, but I think one of the reasons that company is in financial trouble is because they overexist accentuated dual function machines. Yeah. And you know, literally a dual function forehead, which would be a two and a two, would cost about ten thousand dollars more than our six head compact. Uh, so it just didn't make you're better off to have two foreheads. Yep. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yeah, about the same price. Um, you're asking about when you know, when very few situations does it really make sense to just have a multi unless all your business is, is large orders, right? Okay. Um, and even then it's not 100% logical. Get yourself a single head, right? When your business grows, then you make a determination. In so many cases, if you're, instead of working 40 hours a week, you're working 50, buy a second single head. With the way we work our single, you know, our trade-up program here at Coldesi on the Avance, you have a, now started the clock again for another two years that you have that 100% trade up to a multi-head machine, right? So that's when you make assessment. But no, now, if all of a sudden you have gotten a contract for whatever, the Pinellas County school system, and you're going to be doing the shirts for all of the sports teams, 
which is most people would drool over that account. Yeah, it's a good one. But yeah, nice if you've got an account like that and you need a whole bunch of really, you know, a large, you're in a lot of large orders, man, jump to a for, forehead. Make your assessment based on finances of whether you have to trade in that single head. Because if I have a forehead and a single head, right, what I'm doing now is I can do samples on the single head. I can do what we call name drops, which is the personalization of your shirt. So like this cold Desi here that says Don, I mean, the cold Desi over here, I would put Don, I, man, this is bad. It's, really, <laughs> it's like looking at a mirror drunk. Um, and over here, and I would put Don. I would run off the shirts like we are over here, and then I would take those shirts over to my single head where I would do the name drop oh, that makes with sense. Don and yeah. Bill and Sean and, and, and Mark on the shirts. So that's where you would have, want to have the mix. And when you're not doing that kind of work, you're going to increase your throughput because you have a full extra head you can be sewing on as well. So because the hoop sizes on these machines are almost identical through the majority of them except for the largest two. The, the shirt fronts are virtually the same size, four different sizes, two per head. On, of each size, and you have the jacket back. You're gonna have one different one size on the six head, which is 12 by 12. On the the uh, four head, you also get a 16 by 16. All the machines are gonna do caps. You're gonna have cap drivers for each head. Two. And you're gonna have no, no one cap driver per head. Mark, Mark's in marketing. We'll have two hoop frames per head for the for the uh, for each for each one of the heads. So this would, for instance, have how many cap drivers, Mark? Four cap, Four cap drivers Four. Eight. and eight hoops. Eight, eight hoops. Or cap, cap frames, whatever you want to call them. And they're all 270 degree, three quarters of the way around the cap. Other any other questions? Yeah, any other questions? And just for Stephen, the, the, the home and the ends button are very simple. Yes. They, they do just that. They bring you to the home of the right. design, Back the and, design. The, and the end of the design. Right. right. Yeah. Where is it going to finish, Stephen? You hit the end button. It takes you to where the design will finish at. The home button takes you to back to the spot you programmed as the, the home position. 99% of the time on the home, it's going to be the center. Backstrap. Unless, right. unless for some reason, and you don't use it as much in a, on a multi-head as you do on a single head because... It's, a lot of times you'll move around, play around a little bit with your home position just because you didn't hoop exactly right. Got it? Um, and so if you didn't hoop four of them right, instead of using the home button, just learn how to hoop better. Um, <laughs> right. You know, yeah. a single head, you know, if you look at it, you go, I just want to move it just a little bit, you can move your home and lock it down. But it, it's generally going to that. Or if you want, you want it done? I got just all, just I got all, I got all cases just on you all right nobody, there. Sorry about knows. that. Nobody um, knows. But... Now, you may play around with that start position if you have something you've got to sew over and you know you know you don't want to start sewing right on top of a seam. Like on a cap, you do not want that first needle penetration to be in that seam. Right. Exactly. So that, you would play with it a little bit. So that part is, is, is definitely when you would use it. You wouldn't use them either one really ever on the fly. Right. All right, right. guys. Um, I think that's it. You know, last round of questions. One, two, three. Again, real big benefit of... A multi-head, especially an Avance multi-head, is it's our machine. We have full control over it, so we have been very aggressive in our pricing, and we understand it's cheap. It's I don't it's inexpensive. C -word. It's inexpensive. It's very inexpensive. It, it's a well-built machine. It does a phenomenal job on really small letters, and an amazing job on really large fill areas. Yeah. You know the technology in these machines compared to even some of the, the bigger <coughs> Tajima. Uh, machines on the marketplace, when you do a large fill area, a lot of the algorithms, and especially in that the Japanese machines like that, they, you're, you're going to see looping. Yeah, I don't care whose machine it is, you're going to see looping. With this machine, you just don't see that looping in large fill patterns. So you're doing large patches, and you're doing large you know, designs and jacket back and stuff, you're not going to see that looping that's more common in some of those higher end, higher end bank brands. Yeah. And we've actually got a success story for, I think it's JMH, where they sold yes. off their there are mm -hmm. SWF, SWF machines, right. which were a lot more expensive for these, right. and are extremely happy with them. Yeah, they sold off literally a six head, I mean, four, a yeah, six head compact and a single head, and put in a four head and a six head, and they only had to put out about twenty thousand dollars difference. And their other machines are over four years old. We will not be there, Eric. Um, what we have chosen to do as a company is what you're watching right now. 
Cold SE is, and, and it's actually expanding. Uh, I'll go ahead yeah, and yeah, go ahead. Beans no. now. Uh, over the next couple of months, we are actually setting up a sound stage where we will be able to be, at the spur of the moment, be able to do a live demonstration for you on any piece of equipment. Uh, if we have to do a one-on-one -on -one training with you, let's say we've trained somebody on a multi-head and they brought in a new employee and they don't, can't really budget to bring in somebody to do a two-day full training, they want to do training, we can do a, a half-day live training with them for a fraction of the cost and have the exact and, and have interfaceability like we do. In fact, if we were doing a one-on-one -on -one demo right now, yeah. I wouldn't have you type to me. We would actually have the microphones on two-way yep. and we would be talking. Absolutely. So that's where we've invested a lot of our money. Shows have gotten so big these days, and I've been in the industry for almost 25 years, and shows used to make sense for everybody. And the shows nowadays don't make sense for anybody except for the show promoters and the convention centers, right? because the traditional show used to have 600 to 800 vendors at it, and everybody came. You got great quality uh, opportunity to see a lot of vendors, and you got a chance to, for us, to see a lot of customers. Yeah. And everybody benefited. Now they take these shows, they throw all of their training sessions right in the middle of the day. Yeah. You know, so. All right. So, so you know, the, the, the last comment I think here is from Stephen. Uh, yes, it does a great job on the fills. Love the machine. Thanks yep. very much, Stephen. Um, everybody have a great night. Uh, Thank we you all. You if you need anything, in. contact Mark. You know, great way to do it is contact Mark off the Facebook page. Yeah. If you're looking for a way, jump up, Facebook, message him. He's very good about getting it to the right people as quickly as possible. And you know we'll, we'll we'll take care of you and, uh, and uh, good talking to you, Vince. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's, it's good to see. You hey guys, high. it's good to see people who are happy and, and you know attending these. And you know this may not make sense for some of you have them single head right now, but guess what? Six months down the road, you've seen it. You're going to be comfortable with the control panel. It's very similar, um, and and easy to, to to transition to a multi head. Thank you guys for being here tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in a couple weeks in our next one. Have a good night.